Hello guys, welcome to another update video on my Unity multiplayer project. If you're new here, in my spare time I've been making a multiplayer first person game with multiple game modes. Currently I'm still working on the fundamental systems for the game, but it's fairly playable and almost ready for its first playtest. With the current plan, I hope to add many unique game modes that can be played in a variety of team sizes. Hopefully that'll be fun, but we'll have to wait and see. Oh okay, yeah, enough jibber jabber, let's get on to what I've worked on since the last update video. Starting off, I worked on finishing up the valley map. This included finishing the interior of the larger house or cottage. I wanted to add something to the interior so that they were not completely blank, but not too much that they looked too cluttered. I modified some previously modeled low pulley vehicles of mine and placed them around the map. There is now a campsite beside the waterfall, and speaking of the waterfall, as you can hear it probably, it now has a sound effect. I also just added some ambient wind noise to the entire map. The valley map is feeling much more polished now, and I think I will be leaving it like it is for the time being, and we'll be moving on to making the next map. I'm unsure what the setting or theme of the next map is going to be, so feel free to leave your suggestions below that like button. Now, on to the next thing that I worked on, which is the ability for the player to crouch. Now you can crouch, which changes the player's height from 2 units tall to 1.5 units tall. This will allow players to hide behind cover or get through things like windows easier. There are two main steps to doing this. The first thing I had to do was the animation. I have to add my animation controller to play the crouched animations if a crouch boolean is true. These animations look okay, but not the best, so I may tweak the animations in the future. The second thing is the player collider and camera. When the player crouches, I lerp the capsule collider scale down to 1.5 units, as well as lerp the camera and hands position down. When the player stands back up, the collider scale and camera location returns to the original state. One other thing to check is if the player is underneath an object when crouching. If it is, then the player won't stand back up because otherwise your head will be stuck in that object. And boom, we have crouching! Next, I decided to look at getting that juicy FPS higher. I figured out and kind of already knew that it's all these trees that were the culprit. So I just did this, and boom! Woohoo, look at that FPS! But actually, we want the trees, so I need a real solution. So the first thing I did was just lower the amount of trees that are actually in the map. I think it actually looks more natural with less trees. Next, I implemented the level of detail or LOD system which Unity has built in. Basically how it works is you make multiple detail levels of your model and then the LOD system loads a lower resolution model as the camera moves away from the model in the game. When the model is far away and small on the screen, you don't need the highest detail model anymore because it's far away and you can't see that detail anyway. So that's exactly what I did with the trees in the valley map. As the camera gets further away, a 2D billboard of the model is loaded and eventually are completely culled. When doing research about generating and rendering 2D billboards of models in video games, I came across a fellow developer, Winterbolt's post about a billboard generator asset he was working on for Unity. I thought instead of trying to make it from scratch on my own, I thought I would help out a fellow developer and it seemed like exactly what I needed, so I grabbed his asset from the asset store. After talking with him and modifying the asset for my needs, I was able to generate a texture atlas of my 3D tree models. A texture atlas is basically a bunch of 2D images from every angle of the model. Then I can feed this texture atlas into a renderer that will decide which image to render on the billboard depending on which angle the camera is looking at it. Although it's not perfect, from afar the billboard will then still look like the 3D model but without actually having to do the rendering calculations for a full 3D model. But now there was a very noticeable transition when the LOD system changed between the 3D model and the 2D billboard. So my solution to this was to make a shader using shader graph that phases the meshes in and out when they transition. 
and now the transition looks much more polished. This helped the FPS a bit, but I definitely need to continue to optimize this billboarding and LOD system in the future. Big thanks to Winterbolt for the asset, link to that is in the description. The next thing I optimized was the clouds. And when I say optimize, I mean that I scrapped the old way of doing them using GPU instancing and Perlin noise. And instead, now I'm using the one and only, don't get mad at me for saying this, Unity Particle System. It took a lot of tweaking to get the clouds looking right, but I think the clouds look even better than they did before. I think they look more sporadic now, which is a good thing because clouds in the sky are random by nature. Feel free to let me know what you think. But back to the optimization of doing this, the Unity Particle System just handles computing multiples of the same model way better than any custom script that at least my skill level could come up with. Here is the now improved FPS, and that's about it for the optimization that I did. The final thing that I worked on is the setting system. If we go to the settings here in the main menu, this system allows the player to change the game settings such as resolution, mouse sensitivity, key bindings, quality, etc. In order for this system to work though, I needed to save these settings to a local file that is loaded every time you relaunch the game. Here is the text file that the settings are saved in and loaded from. You can even manually edit this file without opening the game if you need to for some reason. I also built this system in a way that it will be easy to implement more settings as they're needed in the future. So that's about all I have this time. Make sure to join the Discord community. Also make sure to click on the playlist in the end card to watch all the previous and future videos on this project. I hope you liked this update video and I hope to see you in my next one. Until then, thanks for watching.